noted L.A. gang researcher Alex Alonzo. With us is Alex Alonzo, president and founder of StreetGangs.com. He is an expert on gang activity. He's a social geographer specializing in crime and gangs in Los Angeles. He's a Ph.D. candidate at the University of Southern California. Alex Alonzo has been studying L.A. street gangs for 20 years and has testified as a gang expert at more than 300 trials. Prosecutors love to use the gang member identity against a defendant if they can because it ultimately makes their prosecution much easier. The original kids that started MS were mostly stoner kids that were into heavy metal music. The MS-13 gang is an American creation. It was American born on this soil right here in Los Angeles. I went out and did the field work, created turfs, territories for just about every single gang in the county. Well, that's the sign for Crip. The prosecution is going to blow this up and they're going to have it on the projector so that all 12 jurors can see this image and they're going to constantly talk about how it means Crip, how it's gang related. And once they put this image in the minds of the jurors, it's going to be pretty powerful for the prosecution. Compton is completely covered in gang turf. There's a dozen Crip sets, another dozen Piru sets, and about 15 to 20 Hispanic street gangs. Here you see a actual vine of grapes that represents this neighborhood, Grape Street, Grape Street Watts, named after the street grape. When Raymond Washington started the Crips, they wore leather coats. Leather coats became a big deal because that's what the Panthers wore. So stylistically, they wanted to be like the Panthers. Politically, they didn't have the know-how. All these gangs that have been victimized by the Crips, they come together and say, hey, these Crips are just running all over us. We gotta defend ourselves. A lot of the conflict between the different gangs would start in some form on the campus of the school, but it'd be settled somewhere off campus, either in Crip neighborhood or in Piru neighborhood or somewhere else. He is constantly snapping photos and rolling off video, documenting what he knows and never hesitating to ask the locals about what he doesn't know. I got a question for you fellas. What does the CHS in CV70 mean? Let's say if you're not admitted you like a red sweater or something, and you was in the blue crips, what would you do? Well, the person would never wear it. Yeah, but then you will make the nun feel bad or whatever, and you're making your own grandma feel like rubbish. They've spent that long knitting something for you when I was talking from personal experience. They're going to check that you was wearing that. Well, I personally don't know anyone who's ever had a sweater knitted for them. So maybe in England it's a little different than yeah. here it is in the States. Race does play a role. If you look at gangs historically, it was always the immigrants mm -hmm. and the disenfranchised that were part of the street gangs. You take America back over 150 years, it was the Irish immigrants, the Jewish exactly. immigrants, the Italian immigrants. Exactly. It's really, that hasn't changed. Now it's the blacks and Hispanic immigrants, whether they're from Mexico or Salvador, El Salvador, or if they were born here mm -hmm. and their parents are from there. We see it in Long Beach with Cambodians. So there is an element of race and ethnicity that plays into gang formation and why it's so pervasive in those communities. Well, the research that you've read about and that I've done specifically is more about LA's history going back to the 40s and 50s. The number one issue at that time was police brutality. He recruited officers that were from the South. He recruited officers that he knew hated black people. And he didn't care about policing the black community in a way to make everyone safe. He just wanted to police the community to, to keep them there and to keep the whites over here safe. So by the time you get to the early 60s, you had an environment that was ripe for a riot. The city burned on for six days, and at that time, it was the worst urban uprising in American history. What law enforcement does now in Los Angeles is use certain words to try to calm, calm the community, calm the city, and they know which words work. One of the words that works is saying, we're gonna be transparent. They don't wanna see a riot in their city. Before you knew it, just the whole city was on fire. It was amazing to even witness it. Shortly after the riots, the four major gangs in Watts all came together. And if you look at crime statistics for the following year, it was, a, it was the first reduction in murders, crime, since 84. 10, 15, 20 years ago, it was way worse than it is now. Uh, crime rate was like three times than it is now in certain neighborhoods. So I wouldn't say the problem's alleviated or it's gone away, but we, we have one of the safest cities in the United States. We have one of the lowest crime rates of a large city. We have over 4 million people in the city, over 10 million in the region, and we only had about 300 murders. I know 300 sounds like a lot, but when you compare it to many cities across this country, LA, Los Angeles has one of the lowest uh, murder rates in all of America.
reform has come, but incrementally. From Bernard Parks to Bratton to Beck, police completely different from Daryl Gates. So I gotta teach him how to conduct himself, where to put his hands, how to behave, where to position them, so that we can make it where? After the end of the day, where are we going? Home. Home. Thank you.